Genesis 24, part three. This is where we're going to take a macro view and re recap Genesis 22 and 24 and look at some New Testament verses where we see this picture of Abraham as a type of the, of the father, Isaac the type of the son, Eleazar the type of the spirit, Rebecca the, the type of the church. So we'll just hit some high points from the Genesis chapters and then pull out some New Testament verses that uh, that appear to uh, fulfill or, or speak of these as types. I probably could have picked out any number of verses. I, I usually only picked one or two, but we could definitely go very, very long on this if we really wanted to. But in the interest of time, we'll just do a, a verse or two at a time. Abraham, in, in Genesis 22, they Abraham gets the call. And it says that they go as one to the place of sacrifice. And John 10, 30 says, I and the father are one. So again, Abraham, type of the father, Isaac, the type of the son, they're together. Hebrew word there is yachtav. And that just means they're unified as, as they went about this very serious uh, command that they got from God. Next, Isaac is sacrificed, again, typologically speaking, and then resurrects. And typologically, we could say that Isaac was dead to Abraham as soon as the command came. And then the scripture notes that they took three days to get to Mount Moriah, where Isaac was then resurrected. So um, 1 Corinthians 15, Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. He was buried and raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. And so we see that type there of the, the son dying, the son being sacrificed um, with you know full unity with the father. The promise then, uh, so God spares Isaac, uh, the promise of the offspring is reiterated. Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans, I am coming to you. And that's interesting because the next thing that happens to Isaac is he disappears. Genesis 22 verse 19, uh, you, you're expecting it to read Isaac and Abraham came down from the mountain, they joined their servants and they went back to Beersheba. It doesn't say that. It says Isaac, I'm sorry, it says Abraham came down and joined his servants and went to Beersheba. So our question is what happened to Isaac? Isaac is then edited out of the record or we could say he disappears and uh, kind of where Jesus is today, he's seated at the right hand of God, Colossians 3 verse 1. So we don't, we haven't met Christ face to face, but we will someday and that's the exciting part. And so Rebecca, the bride, has not met Jesus, has not met Isaac face to face uh, when, when she agrees to go follow him. And then moving to Genesis 24, we have Abraham commissioning, commissioning his servant Eleazar. We aren't given his name in, in chapter 24. We have to go back to verse uh, chapter 15 before we see when we see his name as Eleazar, which in Hebrew can mean comforter or helper of God. And so Eleazar, Eleazar then becomes a type of the spirit uh, to go gather a bride for the son. And so we have this type of father, spirit, son, and church here. Um, John 14, I will ask the Father, he will give you another helper, referring to the Holy Spirit, so that he may be with you forever. And you, may, you have the sense of the same name, uh, helper of God, uh, Holy Spirit is called a helper. Rebecca is part Jewish and part Gentile. I think we can miss that part, but she is a blood relative of Abraham, and yet she is not a follower yet of the God of Israel. She's living as, uh, as a distant, uh, in, a, in a distant land as a Gentile. Um, lots of verses talk about this. Romans 11 uh, supports this. Uh, Ephesians 2, Paul says, And he came and preached peace to you, shalom, who were far away, Gentiles, and peace to those who were near, referring to Jews. And so I think that's interesting. The church is, we tend to think of the church being Gentile, but really it's the Gentiles grafted in to the, uh, the olive tree of, of Israel. Rebecca agrees, though she has never met the groom face to face. 1 Peter 1, and though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with inex joy inexpressible and full of glory. And that's just a picture of Rebecca for sure. Next, we have Eliezer giving Rebecca gifts as a testimony of Abraham's faithfulness. And that reminds us that the Holy Spirit gives us spiritual gifts. He gives gifts to the bride of Messiah. And certainly we could look at the, the spiritual gifts, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. But uh, we can also look at Hebrews 2.4. God is also testifying with them, both by signs and wonders and by various miracles, and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. 
in uh, next Laban, who is a type of the flesh and the world. A lot of commentaries don't pick this up, but I definitely see this as a type because Laban is attempting to distract, delay, and obstruct Rebekah's answering Abraham's request to go follow after the, the son. 1 John 2, 15, 16, do not love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And remember, this servant here is a, an emissary of Abraham. He's an ambassador for Abraham. So to reject the servant is to reject Abraham. So we're making a choice between following the world, hanging out with Laban, or following uh, following after the father's request leading us to the son. And I think there's just a big application there for us because the things of this world are, you know, the glitz and the glam and the things that, that got Laban's attention, they're there for us too. And we, we have a daily choice to make between following after those things or locking on and following after the son. Rebecca, fortunately, <laughs> overcomes these distractions and makes the choice to pursue Isaac. First John uh, 5, 5, John continues, who is the one that overcomes the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God? So again, the, the Labans of the world wants to say, hey, what's the rush? Why don't you just uh, kick back and enjoy the finer things in life for a while? But the spirit is on task, just like we should be when we're on mission. Rebecca did not choose to be the bride, but she had a choice to follow. And I think that's fascinating here when we look at this whole fate versus free will argument that goes by uh, many names. But uh, we looked at that uh, in the, the John verse where Jesus says, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you. Also, Galatians, you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not turn your freedom into the opportunity for the flesh, but serve one another through love. So the Bible supports that we cannot do anything to earn our justification with God. That is a free gift that Jesus paid only. Jesus plus me equals, you know, works. And and, and that's not anything I can, uh, I can bring. But we have a choice after that. Really, every moment after that is a choice that we make. We have the choice to follow or not follow. Next, Isaac then sees the camels coming with the servant and the bride. And I think that's fascinating. It's a picture of the second coming. He will send forth his angels with a great trumpet blast. They will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other, Matthew 24, 31. The bride then veils herself. And Galatians 3 says, For you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. So we are presenting ourselves as a pure, spotless bride um, for our groom. The servant then gives an accounting to Isaac, and we looked at that uh, in part two. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. So the Spirit is there testifying on behalf, giving a good account on our behalf, uh, Romans 8, 16. The servant presents Rebecca to Isaac. Um, in him, you also, after listening to the message of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Spirit of the promise, Ephesians 1.13. And again, can we seal ourselves? No, God has to, um, God has to send the Spirit to, to preserve us and protect us and present us to the Son. Then Isaac brings Rebekah into his tent, uh, tent of Sarah, and John 14 says, If I go prepare a place for you, I am coming again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, you will also be. And then finally, Isaac loved Rebekah. In Ephesians 5.25, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. So it's interesting that the Bible often uses the covenant of marriage to describe the relationship with Christ and his bride. And we see this in all throughout Genesis 24, and it's why it's such a pivotal chapter, and it's why we spent several parts going through all this. After finishing his discussion on husbands and wives in Ephesians 5, Paul writes this in verse 32. This mystery is great, but I am speaking with reference to Christ and the church. So therefore, this, this model that we have of, of husband and wives in marriage, one man, one woman, is to represent 
Jesus Christ as the groom and the the spotless church as the the, the as the bride of Christ. Sometimes we aren't so spotless. Uh, we definitely need His cleansing, but we have that choice to make again to follow Him or to follow the world. So I think this is all very very specific and, and very fitting. It's often said that Jesus is on every page of the Torah, and I think no more is that evident here in Genesis 24. Romans 15: For whatsoever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction so that perseverance and the encouragement of scriptures, uh, we might have hope. And I think that's very, very beautiful and very apropos of Genesis 24. Now, on your screen, you can see a picture of Beersheba, which is where uh, we presume Isaac and Rebecca made their home. It'll be, it'll be between there and, and Hebron for sure. Next time we'll be in Genesis 25, which will be the birth of Jacob and Esau and the famous birthright story. So join us next time for Genesis 25. Oh,